Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Always a bad question to ask, right? I should ask for if anyone can't. But um, I only have two slides. One is this title slide that shows you how to contact me and gives you a brief sentence about what I'm talking about, which is operationalizing object detection on OpenShift. And then I have another slide at the end with resources. But in the middle, I just have demo. And I'm going to start with the punchline, which is the problem we're talking about, object detection. So say you have an image like this image of uh, US uh, cyclocross champion Katie Compton, or uh, this image of a hungry macaw, or this image of an adorable child and a unusually well-behaved terrier. Um, you want to, you know, pass this image to a program and tell you what objects are in it. This is a this is a sort of important problem in actually processing images at, at scale today, and it's one that Intel recently had been out of out of scope for. Uh, computational methods and something you'd have to sort of devote a person to. Um, the thing I'm going to talk about today is how I took an off-the-shelf model for object detection, uh, ran it in TensorFlow, and operationalized it on OpenShift. So the end result of what we have here is that we want to be able to take one of those images, pass it to a service, and get back a list of all the objects that we think are in that image. So if I want to pass it to this web service here that I have running in OpenShift, um, I have three components here. I have a script that encodes an image as a JSON payload that I can pass to a REST service. I have just in um, connecting to that REST service and posting that payload. Um, and then we'll just uh, see what the output for that looks like for this uh, kid and terrier picture. So we'll get a bunch of uh, JSON back, and we have um, very high confidence that there's a person and a dog in this image. Um, and then we have lower confidence that there's a, a necktie, a frisbee, and a, and a snowboard in this image. So if we actually want to see uh, where these things are getting identified, I have another script that will take this and put bounding boxes around the objects that it uh, found. And it'll render that as a new image, which we can look at. And I guess I see how you might think that these uh, these kid shoes are, are snowboards. But so we have uh, we have a, a kid and a, a dog, and then whatever this uh, bit of hand is identified in as as well. So we can repeat this with these uh, with these other images we looked at. And I'll just use a little uh, script make it easier and this is just sort of a shell function that I made so that I don't have to type as many things and mess them up here but if I want to look at the uh, uh, object classes in this image of Katie Compton I see that there's a bicycle and a person well very very good we we would hope there's a bicycle and a person in there and then I'll annotate that image and see that these uh, bounding boxes are a little harder to see because the image is, is larger, but we can see that there's a uh, bounding box around um, Ms. Compton, a bounding box around her bicycle, and actually it identified many of the sort of blurry people in the stands uh, as well who are spectating the race. Uh, and then finally, let's look at this for the macaw. Um, So we have uh, actually some spurious results here. It would be interesting to see uh, what sort of confidence levels we had for those. But we can annotate that image with bounding boxes and then see what that looks like as well. And we see that we've, we've identified the, the bird, but we've also identified some parts of the bird as potentially other things. So I don't want to talk uh, too much about how the actual technique uh, YOLO, you only look once, works. Um, basically, the, the interesting thing about how this object detection technique works is that previous techniques looked at um, looked at windows of the image and tried to classify the image as if it were the entire. Looked at that window and tried to classify it as for the entire thing. Uh, YOLO has a sort of interesting technique where it divides the image into potential objects and then classifies those images and does it all sort of in one 
one pass, which winds up being much more efficient than looking at looking at an image a thousand times or you know maybe more than that. Uh, so that's why it's called you only look once. Uh, what it looks like in OpenShift is is very simple. You can load a TensorFlow model, and certainly you could do this in uh, with a with a dedicated model server as well. But if I just want to put a REST API around something, um, it's really just handling a request, um, decoding an image using OpenCV, and then using the TensorFlow network to make a prediction and returning a JSON structure. Uh, if I want to operationalize this in OpenShift, I can just create an application template, which is what I'm running this as, and then deploy it to OpenShift uh, very easily. And if I have an automatic build set up for this image, I can rerun it as well. So some of the, uh, so I think I think the the main interesting thing about this is, as you saw, it's um, it's not lightning fast, but it's pretty fast by web service standards. And um, the interesting thing about operationalizing this uh, was that I used um, a CPU optimized build of TensorFlow. So a lot of times you think about using GPUs for doing machine learning and, and certainly for scaling up, you can use GPUs and in more recent versions of OpenShift, you can schedule jobs on GPUs as well. But you don't always have a GPU. Um, my, my personal laptop doesn't have a GPU that I can run TensorFlow on, for example. And sometimes you want to get as much performance as possible at the CPU. So I was really interested in seeing like how well can you do with TensorFlow on the CPU. So the uh, reference implementation of YOLO uh, from the author's website uses a custom neural network library, and that took about 11 seconds per image. If you run this against um, if you run a, a TensorFlow implementation of YOLO, it's faster. It's about two and a half or three seconds per image, but that's still uh, longer than I want to be waiting around for identifying that my son's foot is really a snowboard. Um, so I compiled TensorFlow with the SIMD instructions that are available on, on recent uh, Intel processors and actually got it down to you know just about a second uh, or less for classifying objects and images, which is the sort of results you were seeing in that in that service. So even with all this realization, that's sort of an acceptable latency for a occasional use service. So uh, in conclusion, um, these resources will be online. I have a link to a talk explaining YOLO as well as to the author's website with more implementations and details of refinements. Uh, here's the link to the Darkflow TensorFlow implementation of YOLO in the Darknet uh, system that I use, and I have a link to my GitHub repository with, a, with an OpenShift template so you can try it out yourself on your own OpenShift installation or under a sequester up. Mm -hmm.